You know what frustrates the hell out of me? Ballpoint pen ink on my leather, especially when it's in my car on my leather seats, or maybe it's on my leather sofa in my house. Maybe it's on my leather shoes. Maybe my wife's leather purse. That's a problem I wanna help you all solve. Hello everybody, I am Chris Ricana, the Director of Success with Dr. Beasley's, and today we are here to talk about ballpoint pen ink on leather. But first, before we get to that, I wanna go ahead and ask you to go ahead and smash that subscribe button and go ahead and tickle that notification bell so you can be notified the next time we drop a new video on the Dr. Beasley's channel. So there, of course, are gonna be some at-home remedies that you're gonna be able to look up online and find this. But the fact is, do you really wanna be putting some sort of homemade alcohol-based or solvent-based or thinner-based solution on your leather, whether it's your leather sofa or your leather car? Probably not the best idea in the world. If you wanna be surgical about it, let's use a chemical that's specifically focused on removing that contaminant, in this case, ballpoint ink, off of that leather. So so that way we can safely lift and remove it without damaging what's behind it. When it comes to attaining the best possible results with an ink remover, timing is everything here, folks. The more expeditiously we can address the issue, the better the end result is gonna be. So if that ink mark has been sitting on your sofa for a year or more, you know, we might have some improvement there, but you know, let's temper expectations a little bit. But you know what? You got little five-year-olds, and hey, they were drawn in the back seat on the way home from school and the, the pen exploded on them. You know what? I better go sit them in front of a movie on the Disney Channel so I can go ahead and address this right now and get that off then and there. The other thing we wanna consider is the type of leather. Now, in the automotive realm, 90% of the leathers that are gonna be inside your car are going to be top-coated leathers. And the fact is, a lot of it, the leather furniture that's sold for the home, a lot of that is top-coated leather. You're gonna get the best results of the ink remover when you apply to a top coated leather. If it is not a top coated leather, something like what I have right over here, you would actually see when you apply the product, it's going to darken significantly. A top coated leather is not gonna darken so much. So not to say that you can't have some decent results, but the best results are gonna come off of top coated leathers. And like I said, that's traditionally what you're finding on anything in your car. A lot of the leathers in your home are gonna be top coated, you know, except for the really high end stuff. And then of course, you know, clothing, when it comes to like shoes and that kind of thing, or a purse, you know, I'm gonna say 90% of that kind of leather is gonna be top coated as well. So again, multiple uses in the home, fashion leather, as well as automotive leather. So let's take a look at how ink remover works. And in this case, we're gonna look at some leather samples because you know what I got right here? I got three different kinds of leather. I have a top grain leather that's a semi-aniline dyed with an embossed grain pattern. And then I have a full grain leather, semi-aniline dyed with a natural grain pattern. And then I have a full grain aniline dyed natural grain. This is the top end stuff right here. So what's the difference between these? Basically, you know, top grain is the top of it. When they take the hide off the animal, that's the top. You have a full grain, that's a full thing, or you got the split that's underneath. So this is a top grain. Semi-aniline means it's top coated. It's not dyed all the way through. And then you have uh, in the uh, embossed grain. Again, embossed grain means that they are stamping that grain pattern on it. And so that way that kind of covers up a lot of the natural scarring and stuff like that you would typically see. Embossed means that they were actually stamping and embossing that grain pattern onto the leather. So that way it's a very consistent graining on the leather. Now you have a full grain hide. So this is the whole grain taken off the animal. This is again, semi-aniline, so top coated and a natural grain. So this, instead of being embossed, this is exactly the graining as it came off the animal. Typical of top end leathers, full grain, full aniline dye, dyed all the way through, and a natural grain pattern. So as it came off the animal, this is the leather that's gonna have the best, most sauce and supple hand. So three different kinds of pens here, well, three different colors anyway, but the whole point is here, again, this product, ink remover, we're focused on ballpoint. It's not so much for markers or Sharpie type things, but it is more for ballpoint ink. Basically, the process is pretty simple. Always start with a shake. And then we give you these really cool swabs. And you'll notice kind of pointy on one end, flat and kind of like a paddle or an oar on the other end. So kind of depends on what you're using. But again, you want to be super surgical with this. This is not something that you want to just spread all over the place because then you're gonna get an ink mess. What we're doing here is we're basically, we're taking that ink that's dried on your leather 
and we're going to basically liquefy it and then we're gonna pull it up with our microfiber. So what we wanna do is really saturate the swab. Once this swab touches ink, I don't want it going back in because it's been contaminated. I don't wanna put ink back into the ink remover. So that's why I'm really gonna saturate this pretty much as much of the ink remover as this swab is going to hold. And then what I'm gonna do is very, again, in a very surgical manner, I'm not really putting any pressure or abrasion. I'm just going right across on that ink line and I'm just working it a little bit, just enough to get it up off. And then immediately I'm gonna come back with my microfiber and wipe it up. Don't wanna let that product sit on there too long. Cause again, this is, this is pretty aggressive. You can see how I pulled it, that ink off is sitting there right on the swab. So if I had to go back at it again, which there's just a teeny tiny little bit of residue, I'm gonna rotate my swab so I don't hit that ink. I don't wanna put that ink back on the leather again. So I'm gonna rotate ever so slightly and just address that last little bit of ink that's in there. And with leather, sometimes you might need to have to stretch it. Cause remember a lot of leathers have that graining in there. So you might have to pull on it a little bit to stretch there. But again, I wanna come back immediately with my microfiber and pull up, see how I'm pulling up the ink off the leather. So that's exactly what I, what I wanna accomplish there. So again, I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna to rotate to a part of the swab that I didn't use. And I'm going to emulsify the blue ink now and just pull it up. And it basically see how it turns to, I mean, it basically turns to liquid and then wipe it up. See, and again, you can see on my towel here, how I was able to get that ink off. So again, I'm gonna rotate my swab to an area that it does not have ink on it. And there's just a little bit of blue sitting right there. I just wanna pull off. And again, I come back with my microfiber and pull it off. Now I got a little bit of area left on this swab. I'm gonna go ahead and address this red ink here. And again, I'm just kinda, I'm blotting almost, you know? I'm not putting, a, I'm not trying to abrade the surface. I'm just wanting to liquefy and pick it up. That's it, let's see how I pick that up there. And again, there's a little bit of that red left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and work the product a little bit and pull it up off. So we got our blue ink, our red ink, and our black ink kind of blended in a little bit into the swap. So there you go. So that was on a top grain, uh, semi-aniline dyed embossed leather. So now let's move over to a top grain uh, aniline, or no, I'm sorry, this is full grain, semi-aniline dyed natural grain. So there's a full grain hide that is semi-aniline dyed, uh, but is a natural grain pattern. So it has not been embossed. So again, same thing. Being that these are just pretty much straight lines, that's why I like using this. If it was like more of a dot, I might come in and use the paddle and just kind of again, rub on it like that. But I'm going to totally saturate the swab because I want as much product in there as possible. And I'm going to just lay it right on top of that ink mark and just kind of working it back and forth, very little pressure, if any. And again, all I want to do is come back and pull it up and pick up with my microfiber. I'm going to go back, there's still a little bit of ink on the surface, so multiple applications is not unusual. That is perfectly fine. Look at that, no more blue. All right, now I go back and I'm going to let's get the red off. I'm going to try and flip this swab over to the side that I haven't used and just liquefy that ink and pull it up with my microfiber. Look at that, one pass, that got that pretty much. So there's my red and there's the rest of my red right there. And I feel like I've kind of used up this swab, so I'm gonna to switch to the paddle side just to have some fun. I'm going to saturate the swab. And again, I wanna be very exact about this because all I'm doing is liquefying. So I'm just pretty much blotting on here. I rotated my swab around to get to the clean side and then pick it up. See a little bit of black ink still in some of the graining. So again, something like this, it might not be unusual to stretch that leather a little bit to be able to get in the graining of the leather. And again, I'm just blotting here. I'm gonna pull it right up off. And there we go. All right, now let's go to the very best when it comes to leathers, a full grain hide that's fully aniline dyed and has a natural grain pattern. So this is typical of your finest upholstery look. Definitely not something you're finding in a car. Well, maybe not, at least most production cars. 
saturate that swab, surgically place it on top of the ink, liquefy, and immediately pick it up. Come back again and pick it up. And just in some of these little greens here. So this is the nice thing about having the point. I'm having a little, I see a little bit of blue just inside that kind of grain. So again, this is one you can, you can try and stretch leather if you can to get inside those grains, but that's when it's nice to use this little point to really just be focused on just those little areas. Cause again, you know, this is a chemical that can potentially fade colors on the leather. So if you let it linger on there too long, you know, you could potentially fade it. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's a balancing act. You can also come back. There's ways to, you know, restore leather afterwards. And we're going to get into that. But again, just in this heavier graining areas, I don't want to let it linger on there just enough to pull up that blue ink. So there's the blue It's gone. Let's get to that red. I'm going to get a fresh swab because I used most of that on the blue. And you go ahead and lay this down on the red, liquefy that, and then pull it right up. There's my red. A little dirty too, I guess. And then let's finish with the black and pull it up. There you go. So there we go on our three different kinds of leather. Now, after we treat the leathers, we want to get our finishing cream because we want to nourish the leather. We've kind of tortured the leather chemically with our ink remover. So we want to put some of that nourishment back in. Grab a separate microfiber. Don't use the microfiber you're using to pick up your ink, but grab a microfiber from home. Just grab a little bit of your finishing cream and just kind of nourish, condition the area you were treating. And I'm gonna do that on all three of these leather samples. So again, we can help this leather live on for many, many years. Because that's a beautiful thing about this finishing cream is that it has that nourishment that, you know, it's like anything. You get a chemical on your skin, it dries out your skin. You know, anytime you're cleaning your skin, you know, you, I hope you people take showers, you clean, you know, your skin can get dried out. So that's why you got conditioned. So if we're going to put something like an ink remover onto a leather hide or vegan leather hide, you know, faux leather, you want to call it sky, you want to call it leather rat, you know, whatever you want to call it. If it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's a duck. So if it looks like leather and acts like leather, we treat it like leather. Now, one last thing. Many people ask, how do I know if I have a top coated leather or not? One of the easiest ways you can do, if you've noticed here, let's bring out my other kind of light tan colored here. So the difference is, is how it reacts. So let's take our ink remover, saturate our swab. And again, I'm not putting any more ink on the thing, but just, I put it down, it stays the same color. I pull it up, it's the same color. And let me remove my shadow. Let me try that again. So I just put the product down, looks wet, but it doesn't darken, same thing. Now let me do it on this leather. See what happens there? See how that's getting dark? So the more I kind of sit here and work it, and then I go to wipe it off, this is not a top coat of leather. You see how it's actually absorbing into the leather? So again, if I take my saturated swab, and let's say I'm working an ink mark, you can see I'm pulling the ink up off, but some of the product is also absorbing into the leather because again, this is not a top coated leather. So see how it darkened down there me a little bit? So that would be something. Now, you're not SOL. A lot of times this will actually dry up and recover. Uh, if I did, I did a test earlier on this area, which was completely black. You can see, I don't know if you can see where the faded ink line was right there. I got most of the ink line, but if you kind of look in this area here, that's where it was. So it came back pretty well. So it's not like you're dying it dark if you come in with this. But again, this is something where, you know, the, the age old adage, test in a non-obvious area. So if you're not sure, get underneath the seat, crawl somewhere where the light of day never sees, take your swab and just kind of move it around and see if you get that kind of reaction. 
then you know you wanna be cautious. Like, okay, let's go ahead and dab this up and then let's wait until tomorrow and see what this looks like tomorrow. If it comes back, all right, I feel good about trying to get that ink mark off. But what I really wanna see is I just wanna move around the product and I just want the leather to look wet. That's really what I'm looking for. I just want the leather to look wet. I don't want it to necessarily absorb. If I see that, I know I have to use caution, test in a non-obvious area. Hopefully I did this in a non-obvious area and then I have to wait and see what happens if it comes back. In this case right here, it came back fine. So back to our three typical leathers here. And now that we've removed the ink and that we've applied our finishing cream, you'll notice starting on our kind of most typical leather over here. Again, this is a top grain hide, semi-aniline dyed, embossed grain pattern. So this is very typical of what most of you are gonna see if it's real leather in the automotive world or even in furnishing worlds. Um, you see the consistency of it. See how beautiful it is? Came out gorgeous. Again, if we move over to this middle sample, this is something that, um, again, this is a full grain hide uh, that is, again, semi-aniline dyed, uh, but with a natural grain pattern. Again, here, we did a great job removing all those ink marks, and again, the finishing cream nourished that leather, and it looks beautiful and feels great. Now, lastly, on the results, this is our most natural hide. So again, this is not a top-coated leather. This is a full aniline dyed leather. This is typical of the finest upholstery leathers in the world. Now, if you notice where I have the three lines, and I'll kind of mark them here, if you guys can't see them, they're right here, and right here, and right here. So that's where I was applying the ink remover. And if you notice, Compared to the areas here, here, this seems a little bit darker and this is lightened up in here. Again, this is number one. This is because this is a full aniline and not a semi, so it's not a top coated leather. So again, you're gonna have a little bit different reaction here because what we're actually doing here is we are pulling off some of that dye off the top. So that's why you see it's slightly lightened here. But again, you know, this is where we say this product excels in top coated leathers. Can it be used on all their leathers? Yes, but where this product excels is in top coated leathers, which are typically what 90% of you or more are going to see, whether it's furniture or whether it's your car or whether it's fine fashion. The only time you're gonna see really high end, full aniline, full grain natural hides is in the most finest leather furniture. And so unless you're planning on spending, you know, north of, you know, five, 10 grand on a sofa, you're in the clear. Let's go ahead and jump out to Jim Lefebvre's Tesla, who in my personal opinion, he was absolutely insane ordering it with that bright white vegan leather. Cause much like myself, he's got little kids, but he owns Dr. Beasley. So something tells me he has the confidence to know that if something does go sideways, like ballpoint pen ink on his leather, he probably knows what to use to get that off. Welcome to the interior detail bay at Simon's Detail. One thing you're gonna wanna do, especially when you're using a more aggressive chemical like ink remover, is to test it in a non-obvious area. So upon review of this interior space, I kind of found this, back seats reclined, and we have this kind of side trim piece here. So. This way, if anything did go sideways with that chemical, I just did not affect the resale value of the car. So again, you know, whether real leather, faux leather, vegan leather, you're always gonna wanna test in a non-obvious area before you start digging into that ink mark that's right in the middle of your seat. So we're gonna wanna test for compatibility. So what I'm gonna take here is get my ink remover and I'm not gonna you know, completely saturate it like I would if I was actually trying to get ink out. I just wanna get enough on there. And I'm just gonna place a little bit on the surface here, just as I would as if there was an ink mark there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my microfiber and wipe it off. And then I just wanna inspect to make sure that there was no negative effects from the chemical on the vegan leather. And in this case, yeah, we're all good. So. 
let's give this a real world test. No pressure, it's only the boss's car. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and saturate the swab because it goes in once and only once. And again, all I'm trying to do is liquefy that ink. See a little bit left over there. So I'm gonna come back with the clean side of the swab. Again, I'm more or less just dabbing. I'm really not working it all that much because I just wanna liquefy it and then pick it up with my microfiber. And voila, there's our red ink on our swab and on our microfiber not on our vegan leather. How about that? You can have children and have bright white vegan leather too. Thanks again for joining us, everyone. It was great to talk about ink remover and how it works with various forms of leather and how it can help make your life easier. I am the director of success, Chris Ricana, and I do wanna thank you for joining us. I wanna remind you one more time to go ahead and smash that subscribe button, tickle that notification bell. And I do wanna leave you with this, folks. If you are driving in the left lane and you are not passing anyone, it is time to move over to the right. Remember, remember folks, left lane for passing, middle lane for cruising, right lane for entering and exiting the expressway. Drive safely out there, everyone. We'll see you soon.